I can't believe I get up at 5 a.m. as a harbour master and have to check the Brent crude oil prices to see whether they're going up or going down. You're the ones that then don't get any extra help and that money is then being chomped up either with fuel for your car, the food costs more. They're scared. People are scared to turn the heating on. It's cold, it's damp, um, and people are desperate to try and do anything to save themselves energy. The boys are looking, we're looking at one another. Can't do anything about it, that's just how it is. You know, we can't, this, this won't go out to sea for nothing. We've got to catch fish. Hey, Lara, it's Dan here from Sky News. So the last time that we caught up with Lara, she told us she just cancelled her direct debits for her gas and electricity. She simply couldn't afford it anymore. Of course, since then, all the bills have gone up again. Nice to see you again, yeah, six months on. What happened in the months after that? Unfortunately, I've, I, I did have to cancel it. It's, it's only just been reinstated this month. I'm now nearly £600 in arrears. Um, which is really worrying for me, because I've not got £600 to be able to go bang pay it. The government's energy support payments each month have helped, but the fact is, Lara is now in debt. We've agreed that I'll pay £263 for my gas and electric, and on top of that, £10 a month for the, the £600 arrears I owe. And it is frightening, because... I don't see any light at the end of the tunnel. Oh, that bill, my arrears is getting more and more, and I, I just feel I can't pay it. Six months feels a long time ago. When we were here last, summer was approaching, Boris Johnson was still Prime Minister. Since then, inflation and interest rates are up, as are all our bills. To combat it, Plymouth City Council has set up a new multi-agency cost of living task force. It's needed, says its creator, because requests for financial help in the city are up 235% in the last year. We know that this time round the cost of living impact is going to be high for everyone because we all pay energy bills. It's one thing that we've all got in common, isn't it? What is interesting is that we're seeing that increase in wards that ordinarily don't contact them. So my ward in particular is in a more affluent part of the city, um, but the increase has been seen there. So it's still fairly small numbers, but the percentage change is, is quite significant. Brilliant. Do you want to come on through? Yes, lovely. As part of the new task force, free home checks are being offered to the over 50s in the city. The aim to reduce people's bills. But Age UK Plymouth, who run the scheme, say they've run out of kits because demand is so high. Veterans Ian and Annette don't get any benefits and feel that those in the middle aren't getting enough support. You're the ones that then don't get any extra help and that money is then being chomped up either with fuel for your car, the food costs more, the energy bills costs more. Um, and, yeah, it's tough, you know. I mean, you asked about our curtains. Well, you know, why were the curtains closed? The curtains are closed because one of the measures we do is we keep the curtains closed to keep the heat in. Do you want to keep yeah, hold I've of these? Yeah, I've got a few radiators that need doing that. Yep, yes. so that's great. And, and one of those? This Brilliant. is not a tale of pensioners sat in the cold struggling to make ends meet. It is an example of how this charity is having to spread its help to even more in society. They're scared. People are scared to turn the heating on. It's cold, it's damp, um, and people are desperate to try and do anything to save themselves energy. What's good about this scheme is that, yes, a large proportion of it does need to go to people who are on a low income, but there is a small percentage to help that group in the middle um, who don't necessarily claim means-tested benefits, but equally are seeing that squeeze as well. 5.30 a.m. Plymouth Fish Market. For those who've been out at sea, the biggest squeeze at the minute is the cost of fuel for the boat. I can't believe I get up at 5am as a harbour master and have to check the Brent crude oil prices to see whether they're going up or going down. Our profit margins are extremely small and we're trying to keep it that way because we want to keep boats at sea. This morning, the price of fish is strong. But Mark tells me the vulnerable nature of hospitality is proving costly for them. 
one of one of my sort of uh, clients today spoke to me and said I've had to cancel I, I've had to cancel an order of crab so that was um, a thousand pounds in weight of crab had been cancelled because a restaurant in London had closed all of its restaurants the staff have been paid up to Christmas he's now left with that amount of excess meat which he's now having to sell elsewhere so the knock-on effects of people losing their jobs in the hospitality industry is is driving stuff up and down every single day you are looking at colliding factors to affect the fishing industry chris for 45 years chris newman has fished the waters around the southwest but for the last 12 months he's been trying to sell his boat he says tight margins and high costs are making the next generation think twice about getting into the industry. Fuel used to be sort of 5 to 10% of your gross. Now it's 25 to 30%. You know, the boys are looking, we're looking at one another. You know, we can't, this, this won't go out to sea for nothing. We've got to catch fish. What do all these costs mean for the attractiveness of buying your boat and getting into this industry? Well, obviously, people don't want to do that, do they? They don't want to spend all this money. You know, this is what it is. You know, these boats need to gross a lot of money. So people don't want to work that hard, do they? You know, especially when their fuel costs are so much. Plymouth is home to more than 260,000 people. The city falls within the 20% most deprived areas of England, some parts in the top 1%. And as temperatures start to fall, the task force is having to react. Churches, village halls and community centres have been placed on an online map open to those unable to heat their homes. There's about 30 of these so-called warm spaces in Plymouth. Of course, we see them up and down the country. And although it's a really useful place for people to come who are struggling to pay their bills, actually, for many here, it's not about the heating and keeping warm. It's about the community and their mental health. Sandra started coming to the warm space at St Jude's Church in the last couple of months. It's just such a very friendly place to be. I feel very strongly, for me, um, an activity of some kind most days is, is the best way for me to um, manage my time and keep, keep me on a level playing field. How important are spaces like this? Hugely, hugely important, hugely. And I think for a, 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 a city the size of Plymouth, 30, did you say 30 spaces? Needs to be a lot more than that. Needs to be hugely increased upon. You think there's going to be a lot of demand? Definitely, definitely. Running this task force is costing millions, money which councils can scarcely afford. And while it was initially set up for six months, realistically, that'll be much longer. Nobody knows whether the winter is going to force people out of their homes so that they come and use warm spaces, but what we've made sure is that those spaces exist. I hope that we don't have to keep it going for too long, but the reality that we're facing at the moment is that it could well be something that's in existence for a couple of years. Looking back six months, there's no denying that things have got tougher in Plymouth. There is now action and help. But with the worst of winter still to come, nobody really knows if it'll be enough. Damn white is Sky News.